have with us today Spandana Govindari, who is a staff payments engineering lead at Meta in New York. She is she has helped build and scale payment experiences to support social commerce across Instagram, WhatsApp, and Facebook shops and marketplace, helping process billions of dollars of TPV, which I looked up means total payment volume. And before she worked at Apple and Snapchat, and I think she's going to talk about that during her talk, so I should hand it over and say welcome. Spandana. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for the wonderful introduction and also for having me. This is an awesome opportunity. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Elevate. I uh, hope all of you are connecting with each other, um, just getting a lot of talks in, great learnings. Um, I'm here to talk about specifically stepping out of your comfort zone. Um, I'll be talking about uh, why, when, where to transition to when you're feeling stuck, what comfort zone really means and how to leave it and how all of this can truly help you grow your career. But before we start, um, just a little bit more about me. Uh, my name is Pandana. Um, I am currently a tech lead at Facebook working on payments. I graduated from Cornell in 2015 and ever since tried to really diversify my work experiences. I've been in, in, the, in the industry for now six to seven years, but have worked uh, in my own startup. I worked at a pre-IPO company called Snap, which was really small back then, and also at really large companies like Apple and now Meta. So most of this talk will be oriented towards uh, career growth for a software engineer. Um, and I'd like to like just get a sense of like who's in the room. Um, how many of you here have just started working with less than one year of working experience? Awesome. And how many of you have uh, been a software engineer for over a year? Feel free to like use emojis or however you want to or comment here on the feed. So, a lot more people here uh, have worked, looks like, over a year. Um, and we also have some, um, you know, new, new folks here. Uh, so this talk... Um, will be useful not only for like um, uh, people entering the software engineering industry right now, but also for folks who have been over a year and are at a point where they're feeling like they're in a comfort zone and like don't quite understand, okay, what do I do next or how to leave it? Um, and if there are like three takeaways, I would want you guys to take from the stock. Here they are. Um, you... It's important to transition from corporate to startup, specifically for growth as the main factor. Um, every day, you have to continue to develop your skills as a software engineer. Um, if you guys know, if, you're, if you've been in this field, you know, every single day things are changing, new things are coming up. Um, upskilling is sort of becomes your core, learning new languages, so frameworks, libraries, and becoming familiar with them. Um, and the third important point is it's not required to really transition to management to grow. Um, and of course, like I'll go through each one of them and how I really arrived at all of this advice or insights from my own like personal work experience. So if you look at like my own career journey, I've transitioned um, almost every two years. The longest I've worked at uh, actually, one single company is right now at Meta. I'm reaching my fourth year. Um, and I did this transition very early on in my career uh, when I was feeling like I am entering comfort zone or I am in this comfort zone. Um, I think like when you guys go back to like when you're starting your career, uh, most of us are really just desperate to, you know, get a job offer. Some of you may have chosen to work at a startup or some of you may have wanted to work at a big company. And that's a that's one of the like hardest crossroads you'll find yourself where you have to make a decision. So I was in a similar um, crossroads when I started. Uh, I had two offers, one from Uber and one from Apple. At that time, Uber was a really small startup and Apple was a giant and still is today. Um, both of them are really good companies, right? Good team, lots of learning. Um, 
and at the very beginning of my career right like how do you choose um which company to start off or kick start your career with um i'd say like the most important thing i focused on was really like mentorship and where i could find a solid mentor who would have the time to help me grow and i got exactly that at apple this laid a strong foundation for me to leave my comfort zone later on in my career journey i thought i'm just you know going to continue to work work up the ladder in one company um but as i was hitting my one year mark i started realizing i'm already feeling kind of stagnant um i i was feeling like you know i'm not learning anything new or i'm growing um basically uh i i i i felt like my learning curve has reached this peak and everyone's learning curve is different so i have listed here some signs that you should really watch out for when you should transition um and i've spoken to a lot of other software engineers as well fellow female engineers about some of these signs where they felt like either stuck or um kind of trying to find new opportunities uh, for transitioning and some of the signs are really like you know not learning anything new important sign getting stagnant having conflicts uh in your team that are beyond resolution um not getting rewarded not getting enough visibility which is a very big one for women overall you're feeling dissatisfied going to work so when you see all these signs that's a great way to know that it is time to transition and why should you transition right uh if you look at the bubble here the bubble is where your comfort zone lies but outside is where the magic happens uh in your comfort zone you feel safe you feel like you're in control you know all your teammates you know your the company you know how it works like you have a cushion right um but you are still finding yourself walking into it every day feeling dissatisfied disinterested um so that is why you leave your comfort zone in order for you to grow and really achieve that fulfillment and satisfaction um and in order to leave your comfort zone really like three things um uh should happen first of all you need to conquer your fears you should be open to learning and thereby you are going to grow and that's the reason you should transition you know as soon as you are feeling like you are in your comfort zone but you know how do you get out of it really uh there are fears on the other side uncertainties um there's just new challenges that you may not be familiar with right um in order to really get out of your comfort zone start with your own workspace and try and find opportunities uh that are you know kind of out of your own role or out of your own team first um take the baby steps and then take the big steps uh if you're not able to really find opportunities within your own team or within your own company then look for opportunities outside um you should consistently uh, be on the lookout for these opportunities because they will not just walk to you if you're not specifically looking for them and how do these opportunities really look like they come in the form of helping your recruiting team hire or interview candidates they come in the form of mentoring other women engineers these are all that go above and beyond your role but in some way extending your comfort zone so you can conquer your fears find mentors right um remove those excuses that is stopping you from um leaving your comfort zone and then you will find this crossroads really you have two choices in the tech industry in order to grow first of all you know if you're at a big company work at a startup if you're in a startup work at a big company uh it's important to diversify these experiences earlier on in your career because once you've a work at i guess like both sides um you will really understand the industry as a whole how it works and um kind of be ready to take on anything that comes your way um so startups offer various different things than corporates obviously they offer accelerated growth you get to take on a lead uh, ment uh, role um you know more responsibilities more um i guess like roles you can play within a startup and more learning um big corporates they come with their own advantage right like 
there is slower growth maybe lesser responsibilities your work is defined but it's a stable environment for you to really grow experiment conquer those fears slowly um and no one's really like pushing you to uh sort of fill fill this gap uh so they offer really two different um kind of experiences and it is important that you have experience of both so you can in the future delve into something deeper and however regardless where you work in a startup or a big corporate every software engineer comes across another crossroad and this is the crossroad where you have to choose um between going to management and continuing down the IC um uh, ladder and this path is something that is laid out and standardized across the industry and many think management is easy i'm going to get wider visibility however it's not always straightforward within um management as well um there are some skills that are super different if you're becoming a manager versus like an ic and today i'll talk more about what it means to really continue down the ic path because it is a road less traveled and something i have traveled as um, as well when i was at, at these crossroads and decided to choose the ic path so most people think i'm just going to go pick management it's sort of a promotion um right but that is the perception reality is it is not doesn't matter you're a manager or an ic it's the impact that you're making um that really determines um you know like um all the uh, reward the visibility that you get within a company um if you look here i've listed basically um some of um some of the uh, essential um roles and responsibilities as you are uh, climbing up the ladder so let's say you're at that principal ic level or that director or manager senior manager level the kind of uh, words or that stand out in the ic role is collaboration avoiding duplicate work understanding the domain executing mentoring building relationships and giving back in a manager's role or as you are climbing up the management ladder really the stand out words are coaching building culture planning road map determining what each teammate does giving feedback now you can see like stark difference between what you want to do versus like the reality in terms of what actually an ic does as they climb up the ladder versus like a manager so based on this you can decide through the through that important crossroad of yours whether you want to continue down the ic path or the management path and in industry it is fairly common to switch between both you are an ic go to you are like i want to try management go ahead do it if you're a manager you are no longer interested in doing management you can switch back and continue doing ic work and none of that means like you're promoted you're getting promoted or you're getting demoted both of them are separate tracks and both of them um are you know do work that definitely impact the org that is why we have wonderful great ics still in a company and not everyone's a manager <laughs> and we also have managers and directors helping kind of grow the org um but they are just focused on very very different things so i decided to actually choose the ic route um and not go through um management yet in my career because you know i wanted to deeply focus and execute within my domain and develop a deep understanding of payments overall and you know like you may be seeing mostly in your org or company and it's very common to like see um you know maybe like your role model or um some i see this transition to management and um that those sort of examples i guess are very common uh within the industry overall so where do you, i guess like look for when it, at least i was i was starting out as like who are those strong i see women engineers i can look for who are these role models and surprisingly like you know mary samias she was the first female engineer at google she was an i see her i see work uh you know eventually uh, contributed great deal to google uh led her to the path she did uh eventually you know she became the ceo which is like a management path but it is important to shine light on the fact that she was she started out as an ic 
Ruchi Sangvi is the first female engineer at Facebook. Eventually went down this VC route, which is entirely different. But um, she was an IC as well. Uh, both of them built great products. They were significant in the company's growth. So the work that ICs do is really, really important. Um, so I think if I have to leave this talk, um, there's only one question, you know, like I would like to ask you guys, which is, you know, you can choose to take the re uh, road less traveled or the one that is often, but it is important to leave your comfort zone in order for you to really uh, see what's on the other end, uh, where the magic really happens. So with that, thank you, everyone. Um, I hope um, uh, you've learned something from this session, specifically about um, identifying signs for when you're in your comfort zone and then how to leave it confidently in order for you to um, really grow your career. So thank you. I'm happy to take some questions um, because I know we ended a little early. I will also post my LinkedIn if you guys want to connect with me uh, post session. Uh, always looking to connect with more women. Oh, Angie, hi. You're back. No. <clears throat> Do you want to answer questions? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of I see the first question, how can you recognize when you're out of your comfort zone versus truly out of your depth for your current level? This is a great question. Um, so uh, out of your when you're out of your uh, depth for your current level, um, that may not mean you're out of your uh, comfort zone. And what that means is there's just more room for learning um, versus com comfort zone really means you know, that learning has peaked. Uh, so I feel like you can always address the depth and you can almost go deeper. But there is some point where uh, you may want to explore that depth at a different company um, with different challenges. So I was I started at Snap um, within payments. Um, and then I decided I'm going to explore payments more deeply at Facebook. Uh, Snap was small company. I wanted to work on payments at scale, uh, which is a different problem. You really can go deep um, at a company like Facebook that's handling billions of, you know, uh, TPV. So transitioning and leaving your comfort zone um, uh, ultimately also improves the depth at your current level. I hope that answers your question. Um, any other questions? How can you rec? Yeah, that was Morian. Cool. Is there another question? Or is yeah, that there is one more. I hear so much about coaching, giving feedback, and building culture for managers. However, I've seen only one manager do that so far. What is the ground reality of what managers do? Deep, that is uh, terrible. <laughs> the ground reality is that managers are supposed to be coaching, giving feedback, and building culture every single day um exclusively uh if they are if you you are seeing only one manager do that so far in your career um or, or i guess your uh company is important to also like have a conversation with your hr about what manager role means at your company and what the roles and responsibilities look like um and how you could become right a, a manager yourself um, if the, I guess, like the responsibilities are different, it's important to like, you know, take the slide as an example and ask your HR team, uh, to really lay out, you know what, I'm an IC, please, you know, these are my responsibilities. This is the level I'm at. How is it different from what a manager is doing? Can I please, you know, get a rundown and having that clear distinction helps you really understand the, the differences in roles and responsibilities. So I would advise you to definitely be in touch, feel free to talk to your HR team or your career growth team that's laying out what these roles and responsibilities look like. Great. Is that the last question? Okay. Thank you so much, Sandana, for joining us today on International Women's Day. I think we're going to be jumping into a final speed networking round. So a little bit of housekeeping before we go to do, do that. Um, all of these talks are recorded in AirMeet. Right after the session ends, you can replay it. 
by going to your schedule and replaying. So if you have a meeting and you miss out, it's okay. Come back. Uh, this event's still going on tomorrow. It's free. Tell your friends. There's a career fair. People are hiring. And um, there will be also re really great talks and workshops on how to get your resume together how to, and um, how to negotiate your offer, understand a company culture, et cetera. So I encourage you to tell your friends. Come back tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Maybe see you networking. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Andy. Thank you.